children are our future. No matter the time, no matter the location, they will all one day run companies, industries, and even a country. But there is trouble over the horizon. The vision of a loving and prosperous future has been blurred to a haze with criminal activities committed mostly by teenagers 18 years and under. This coupled with numerous social ills creates a society that suppresses the future from prosperity. Papua New Guinea is a significantly resource-rich country with an abundance of oil, natural gas and valuable minerals. However, a stark contrast exists with socio-economic differences and wealth disparities, thus presenting an inevitably large margin between areas of human development. According to the UN Human Development Index Report 2013, PNG ranks alarmingly low as 156 out of 186 countries. PNG's relative level of poverty and increasing number of people living in settlements around the cities, disadvantage with low income, poor living conditions, violence against women and gender inequality remain major challenges for PNG. However, amongst this image of struggling human development, a forgotten plight that remains as endemic as it has ever been is the plight of children throughout the country. Six out of ten children do not go to school. Many children have little or no access to school, making 30% of youth ages 15 to 24 illiterate. Children's rights uh, are deprived in Papua New Guinea uh, by them not going to school. Um, that's one. One of the other things is, I think, caring. I'm finding that even though children are going to school, I'm seeing very young children walking to school um, on their own. And, you know, that, uh, that actually, it sort of makes me worry because uh, as a social worker here at the hospital, I've seen an increase in cases of uh, child abuse and some of these children have actually been uh, taken by an adult while you know they're on their way home or you know or looking for a parent because the parent's not at home school <laughs> Number 
Jiva Baden bin Lusna. All of us are some of you, Mr. Laos, Minogo School. I'm a stab. I'm a Niago Venice Lena. All the free education, I'm a stab go school. My papa, I'm a master's beginning go school, and I'm a government of him good now. Beginning run down lost, read number the inner good lana. I'm a government of law, put him all lost, school number the blah blah blah. In order to provide children with the right to basic education, the free education policy was announced by the PNG government in 2011 and implemented in 2012. <laughs> Some place stop long for eleven. Some place stop long for seven. That's all. Government blow a bit on that. Them got them heavy blow me. Nah, blow all that blah. Papa, mama too. Since the free education policy came into force, primary and secondary schools around the country have seen a high increase in student enrolments. The prime minister's directions that no child has to be turned away. So we have followed the direction and upon enrollment most parents came in in very big numbers. Mopa free education that was uh, announced in 2011, uh, implemented in 2012, 2013 and this is our third year of uh, tuition-free education for all Papua New Guinean kids coming on board. What sort of activities do children actually do if they're deprived of education? I know for a fact that children will resort to uh, to uh, stealing um, if they are not, uh, well, according to them, given some money. Um, and they have, we have had cases of uh, young girls actually getting HIV because the pair, they were, there were two girls that came through, my, uh, through me and the, uh, the foundation, the social work department. When they became HIV positive some years down the track, uh, these girls were from a high school in Moresby because the parents were giving them only two kina they had to travel in from uh, uh, village, villages outside of Port Mosby. So what they did was after school they went and uh, sold themselves. And this is when they were, you know, in grade 7, uh, grade 8, 9, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, and, you know, that's how they, they actually went to school because the parents didn't give them lunch money. World Vision PNG is working with partners to improve the lives of children who are out of the formal school system. When they miss out on the mainline schooling, then they become a problem to society again. So we want to, we want to capture children in that situation. We want to put them into the system that they can be able to grow and to develop positively. And they can be able to be advocates of those who fall out of the system through child protection interventions and early childhood care and development learning centres in the selected communities of Moresby Northeast and South Electorates. education, this personal development for children to nurture their behaviors and attitude so they can become good citizens of the country. So it's really a wide holistic approach that all actors, all government departments and also um, having enough funding, um, which I believe is important, to come into the respective government department, community development department to support them in the work that they're doing. So when the churches and the international NGOs and local NGOs come to support community development in what they're doing. We can have um, lesser resources, but we can have maximum impact because we are well connected um, and we share information and resources and we know where to divert them and what programs to run to which 
priority child protection issue in the country. One of the biggest things is that when I talked about depriving the rights of the child, I forgot one of the other things was that uh, where parents are fighting in front of the children. Um, I have time and time again talked to couples and said to the mother that, you know, try to avoid being beaten because of the fact that the child learns those ways. Now, you know, and when I've uh, counseled couples, I'm saying to the husband and wife, you know, when you fight, the, the child watches you. In future, as a father, if you're going to, uh, if your daughter is going to be beaten by her husband, how are you going to feel? And of course, he says, oh, I'm going to fight him, I'm going to hit him. Well, you're not doing that, you know, by teaching your child the right thing. You are fighting your wife in front of he, her or him. So your daughter is going to grow up thinking that that's the norm. So she will accept her husband hitting her. And now you are, you are saying that you don't want your son-in-law to hit he, your daughter. For the boy, he's going to think that it's right. Dad's always hitting mom, so I can hit, mom, uh, I can hit my wife. And when you want to talk in future, what will happen is that the, uh, the ch uh, children's partners or the children themselves, the boy will say, well, dad, you used to hit mom. So, you know, those are things that are very important that we as parents should see that will affect our children in, in the future. Psychologically, it can also have, uh, like depriving a child of education. I know of children who've actually grown up not being educated and really falling out like feeling, you know, that uh, they're no good because when people ask, you know, what grade did you finish, you know, and I've asked mothers, you know, because on our card, what was your last grade? And the one who has a higher grade, grade 10, grade 12, that sort of thing, she will speak very, you know, but the one, oh, I just did grade three, or we know school, the head goes down. So it does have an effect on, on a child who's growing up, but later on in age, the child will feel that or the woman or the grown man or the grown uh, girl will feel that type of uh, emotion that uh, they they will feel that you know I know of children who said you know my parents didn't put me to school because they thought of my brothers you know and that's that uh, I'm glad to see now that education uh, department is looking at educating girls but still the priority is in getting boys educated